Well, good morning, everybody. It is Friday. Praise God. Uh, we have made it to the weekend again. Um, it is January 29th. And today we're going to take a little bigger bite than we normally do. We're going to tackle um, all the way from uh, verse 7 to 19 in Luke's 21st uh, chapter chapter today in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, so a little bigger bite, um, and then we'll take a bite tomorrow, and I think it'll probably be Monday before we get done with this, this uh, section of this more apocalyptic section of, of Luke, but we'll see. Um, but I kind of debated for quite a while last night and today, and um, about how much of this to take at one time, whether I'm going to stop at chapter or verse 11 or go all the way to verse 19. Um, but I decided here it's the last to uh, to go to verse 19. So there, now you can see me maybe a little better. Um, so at any rate, let's take a look at the 21st chapter of Luke um, from verse 7, from 7 to 19. <coughs> Excuse me. Forgive me. Um, Remember what this is coming after, though. Um, first of all, we were talking about the widows, you know, with the the widow's might and, and devouring the widow's houses first, then the widow's might. Um, and then yesterday, um, he, they were talking, it said, verse 5 to 6, we'll re, we'll re uh, track on those. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon upon another all will be thrown down that's where we ended and this is where this question is now coming uh from the disciples or the crowd perhaps um but most likely it's disciples it seems to me but i'm looking at that that he's just with the disciples like they've talked to the other people and they've broken away and they've started wandering around or something um but at any rate this is a, there's a question asked here so we need to bear that in mind when we're trying to discern what this bit of scripture is is talking about uh, we need to bear that in mind first and foremost okay um so let with that let's look at uh, chapter 21 in luke's gospel verses 7 to 19. they asked him teacher when will this be and what will be the sign that this is about to take place and he said beware that you are not led astray for many will come in my name and say i am he and the time is near do not go after them when, they, when you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places, famines and plagues. There will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Okay. So there's really, I think, whatever that's worth, um, three ways to think about these verses, okay? Uh, the first would be that they are asking him a question about when is the temple going to be destroyed? Well, we know when the temple was destroyed. It was destroyed in A.D. 70 by the Romans when they came in and they they not only did they level the, the temple, but they they sent the Jews out of Israel or out of, out of Jerusalem. They banished them from Jerusalem and they were out into the diaspora and many of them left and that's when you know you have this dispersion of the Jewish people went out into different country different countries in the area and actually they went quite a ways I mean you have some to go all the way into Africa and whatnot uh, some believe that some made it all the way to Asia and whatnot so but that's another story for another day um, but you have this they went out into the diaspora and that's one of the things that ends up with, with you know we have what we have going on in scripture we have you know we have what i believe is really james's uh you know the way james the just jesus brother was was preaching and then you have paul and i think there was some some conflict between those two and ultimately we know that paul the majority of the new testament is is influenced or written by paul um and that's really the the, the incident in the temple with the temple being destroyed and everybody being shoved out of jerusalem 
and James, of course, being murdered and martyred in 63 AD. And that's really what set the, the table for Paul's influence to really reign supreme and to, to really take the day. But that's, again, another day, another, another story. But So what we've got going on here is three ways to take this. One is that it's strictly talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and the, the destruction of the temple. And, of course, even we have the Masada where the where the, the Jewish people were held up um, for many years after 70, and uh, they they were finally killed by the Romans when the Romans built a rampart to come up and slaughter them. Um, that's one thing. That's one way of looking at it. Second would be that we're strictly thinking this is the second coming of Christ only. That this is the, only that, 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 that this is talking about that second coming that we are still waiting for, by the way, just so you know. Or three is that he's somehow blending the two. He's talking about one and talking about the other, um, all kind of intermingled. Um, I'm more inclined to believe the third option, that he's that he's kind of taken, as Jesus seems to want to do, um, he seems to have taken the question and kind of led it where he wanted it to go. Um, but a lot of it does apply to what was going on at the time, okay, just so we bear that in mind. Not that it doesn't, some of it also very much apply for where we're at today and what's coming, which we don't know. So with that, um, they want to know when this is going to take place. And he talks about, you're going to hear about it in wars and insurrections and all of these things. And of course, that was very much was going on. And about others coming in his name and saying, I am he. Well, there were many other Messianic movements going on. I shouldn't say many. There were other Messianic movements going on at the time of Jesus. There were others that claimed to be the Messiah. Okay, That's something we need to know. Um, that's not a, something that's new. And we have people today claiming to be the Messiah. There's some guy down, I believe, down in Florida that claims he's the reincarnation of Christ. So you've got this thing going on. With, with, that's been going on continuously. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the, the, it did come to pass, of course, in 70 AD, that the temple was destroyed, just as he told, said it would be, that all of it was thrown down. Uh, except for if we believe that the Western Wall, the Wayland Wall, is part of the temple. Again, not always 100% agreement on that, whether that was part of the temple or part of the Roman garrison. That's one of those conflicts. Most accept that it was part of the temple, but I digress. Um, the part that we want to lean on this is that we, you know, we don't, Jesus told us, that there's, that there's going to be these things going on for quite a time. Um, and not to get, and not to be thinking that it's all over at any minute, by any means. Uh, we don't know, and and we do have to stay faithful. And I think that's what he's getting at: is that these things, this opportunity that we live in, this time, the, this time, this time between times that we are in, gives us an opportunity to testify. And that's the point. We are called to make up our minds, not, not to prepare our defense in advance, but to to rely on the Holy Spirit to tell us what to tell people when we're when we're testifying. But we do need to be out there testifying. We need to be out there spreading the word of Christ, the good the good news, the gospel that Jesus came. And because he came, um, that verse 18 and 19 come to be true. Uh, but not a hair of your head will perish. We just told him that people, you, some of them, some of you are going to be killed. What do you mean, Jesus, not a hair of our head will be Will, be, will perish. Well, what he's talking at is not about physical physicality, is he? He's talking about spiritual spirituality. He's talking about your, the, the soul. Your soul will not be lost by staying true, by spreading the word, by staying firm in Christ, by not renouncing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, no matter what the world throws at you. Uh, the world's really trying to threat, draw us away from the Christ, and I think that in many ways, and I've alluded to that before, in many ways I think the church has been drawn away, and, 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 and our attention has been diverted from what we really need to be doing. And we are we are, we are are leaning towards the culture. The culture is pulling us the way they want us to go, rather than us pulling the culture the way that Jesus wants them to go. Um, but we need to stay true. Uh, because by your endurance you will gain your souls. So we need to have faith, we need to have patience, we need to have endurance, that endurance in 19, endurance. Um, but Jesus is truly our Savior. He is truly our strength. He is a rock. And if we keep ourselves anchored to that rock, we'll get through this time. Um, is this the end days? I don't know, probably, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely closer. I'm not going to say we are in the end days by any means. I don't like that kind of preaching um, because I don't think it's being faithful to the word. The word is that none of us will know except the Father. And I, re I say that repeatedly, and I will continue to say it repeatedly because I very much firmly believe that. Um, 
you know, one thing that's been true is everybody that's picked a date for the end of the world, the second coming of Christ, every single one of them has been wrong thus far. So uh, that's not a great track record, is it? So let's go with what Jesus told us, not to be terrified, but to have faith, and to keep doing what he told us to do, and that is to keep spreading the word, to keep testifying. This is an opportunity. Rather than looking at this as a crisis, we need to not have fear, uh, which is easier said than done, um, but we need to be bold and we need to be standing in defense of the gospel. So with that, I'm going to let you go and we will tackle some more of this tomorrow morning. And like I said, I think probably we'll get through this on Monday, I'm thinking. I don't know. Who knows? So with that, have a very blessed Friday and enjoy the beginning of the weekend. Uh, enjoy today because it sounds like tomorrow it may snow. So take care and we will see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Be a blessing to someone as well today. Bye-bye.